both the source and the listener are stationary. Take a look at this. You are standing at point A and your friend is standing at point B. In the middle between the two of you guys at point A and B, there's a car that is playing music. So you standing at point A and the friend standing at point B will experience the music in the very same way. The frequency of sound that is emitted by the car is the very same frequency of sound that is going to be observed or experienced by the two of you guys. That is because the distance between the crests and the troughs is remaining the same. Both the source and the listener are stationary. The frequency is not changing. Let's take a look at this example. You are still standing at point A and your friend is standing at point A b but the car is moving towards b the car is moving towards the point b as you can clearly see there's a compression here on the crest and the troughs there is a smaller wavelength and as a consequence a higher frequency so clearly from this sketch you can see that if a source is moving towards a stationary observer your friend at point a the friend is going to observe a higher frequency compared to the one that is emitted at the source. And you, at the other hand, at point A, if there's a source that is moving away from you, then you're going to experience a lower frequency because the distance between two successive troughs is increasing. We have a longer wavelength and as a consequence, a lower frequency. This change in the frequency observed because of relative motion between a sound source and the listener is what we refer to as the Doppler effect. You can see from this example that it is the sound source that is moving. What about a case where the listener is moving? Let's take a look at that. Here we have the listener that is moving towards a stationary source at point A. When the listener is moving towards a stationary source, the wavelength becomes shorter and the frequency is higher and lastly take a look at this case we have a listener that is moving away from a stationary source when the listener is moving away from the stationary source the wavelength is becomes longer and the frequency becomes lower just like in this case we are given the frequency emitted by the source with this frequency emitted by the source we can be able to find the frequency that is observed by the listener using the Doppler effect. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is the equation we use to calculate the frequency heard by the listener. FL is the frequency heard by the listener or the frequency observed and the SI unit is Hertz. And then on the other hand, we have FS. FS is the frequency of source, the frequency that is emitted by the source. It is also measured in Hertz. And then we have V. V is the speed of sound in the medium, and it is measured in meters per second. Usually, we're talking about the speed of sound in air, which is about 340 meters per second. It will depend on what the question says. It's not always 340. Uh, in other special cases, maybe we're talking about the speed of sound in water, which is way more than 340 meters per second. So V is the speed of sound in the medium, which will depend on the question you have at hand. And then FL that is the velocity of the observer or the velocity of the listener in meters per second, obviously. And then Vs is the speed of the source still in meters per second. So this is the equation we use to calculate the frequency had by the listener or observed. Taking a look at this equation, you will realize that we have plus or minus Vl plus or minus Vs. That plus or minus will depend on the situation you have at hand let's go ahead and take a look at that the first scenario we have a source that is moving towards a stationary listener and this is how the equation looks like followed by a scenario where the source is moving away from a stationary listener and we have our equation on the denominator we have v plus vs and then let's take a look at the third scenario the listener is moving towards a stationary source we have V plus VL on the numerator. And lastly, we have a listener that is moving away from 
a stationary source. And on the numerator, we have V minus VL. So these are the four visions of the equations. But don't worry, you don't necessarily have to memorize all these four. As we are going through the examples, you will have an intuitive understanding of which equation you need to use and when from just that one main equation that we have. Take a look at this scenario. The first scenario that we talked about. We have a stationary source and stationary listeners. And we are saying that the frequency emitted by the source is going to be the very same frequency that is observed by the listener. Take a look at this example. The siren of a stationary ambulance emits waves at a frequency of 800 Hz. Determine the frequency of sound heard by stationary observer if the speed of sound in the air is 340 meters per second. The frequency emitted by the sound source is 800 Hz. We are interested in the frequency observed by the listener. So we want FL. What are we given? We know that the velocity of the sound source is 0 meters per second. It is stationary. And then the velocity of the listener is also 0 meters per second because the listener is stationary. But we are given the velocity of sound in air, which is equal to 340 meters per second. We know that FL should be equal to V plus or minus VL divided by V plus or minus VS multiplied by FS. We want FL. This is what you're interested in. We are given FS, V, VL, VS, and now it's just a matter of substituting. So FL will be equal to you. What is the speed of sound in air? In our example, 340 plus or minus VL. Our listener is stationary. So plus or minus zero is just zero. So we can forget about that. Divided by V plus or minus Vs. Well, the speed of sound in air is 340. Our source is stationary. So plus zero or minus zero, we can also just forget about that because it doesn't make any difference. Multiplied by Fs. The frequency emitted by the sound source is 800 hertz. So we're gonna have 800. Now let's go ahead and take a look. 340 will cancel out with 340. So we have the frequency observed by the listener being equals to 800 hertz. So there we go. We have the frequency that is observed by the listener. And it is the same frequency that is emitted by the sound source. This is because there is no relative motion between the listener and the sound source. So the frequency emitted will be the same frequency that is observed by the listener. Example 2. We have an ambulance that is moving towards a stationary listener with a velocity of 30 meters per second. So in this situation, you can see that our sound source is moving right towards a stationary listener. The frequency emitted by the ambulance is 600 hertz. Calculate the frequency that the listener will detect if the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. So the sound source is moving towards the listener. We are expecting the frequency observed to be greater than that which is emitted. So let's go ahead and take a look. The velocity of the sound source is 30 meters per second. So let me write that down. And then the frequency emitted is 600 hertz. So Fs frequency emitted by the source, that is 600 hertz. Calculate the frequency that the listener will detect. So we are interested in FL. If the speed of sound in A is 340 meters per second. So we have V being equals to 340 meters per second. The ambulance is moving towards a stationary listener. So VL is equals to zero. Our listener is stationary. So FL, the frequency observed by the listener, is equals to V plus or minus VL divided by V plus or minus Vs. Everything multiplied by Fs, where Fs is the frequency emitted by the source. So V, that is 340, the speed of sound in A, plus or minus VL. Our listener is stationary. So plus or minus zero 
we can just forget about that and have 340. Everything divided by V, the speed of sound in air, 340, plus or minus the velocity of the sound source, the ambulance. The ambulance is moving towards the stationary listener with a velocity of 30 meters per second. So we're going to have minus 30. We're supposed to have plus or minus V as because it's, it's moving towards we have minus. You can see here in our first scenario that if we have a source that is moving toward the stationary listener, we have minus Vs on the denominator. Let's carry on. So we're going to have minus 30 multiplied by the frequency emitted by the source, which happens to be 600 hertz. So now I just need to put that in my calculator and we have the frequency that is observed by the listener. And this is equals to 658.06 hertz. And there we go. That is the frequency observed by the listener when we have an ambulance that is moving towards the stationary listener with a velocity of 30 meters per second. Right. Our third example. An ambulance is moving away from a stationary listener. So when the ambulance is moving away what are we going to have let's go back to the four equations when it is moving away we have plus vs on the denominator right let's go back to our equation it's moving away with a velocity of 25 meters per second the frequency emitted by the ambulance is 450 hertz calculate the frequency that the listener will detect if the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second right we have Vs, which is 25 meters per second. We have the frequency emitted. So that is Fs, which is 450 hertz. Calculate the frequency detected. So we want Fl. And then the speed of, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. And our listener is stationary so vl is equals to zero right our ambulance is moving away so we're gonna have fl being equals to v plus or minus vl divided by v plus or minus vs multiplied by fs right this is the equation without making any adjustments and then fl is gonna be equals to the speed of sound in a that is 340 plus or minus vs our listener is stationary so we can just forget about that and then the ambulance is moving away so we're supposed to have plus vs on the denominator so that is 340 plus vs which is 25 multiplied by the frequency emitted 450 so again Real quick, I just need to put that in my calculator. So let's go ahead and take a look. What is the frequency observed? The frequency observed is 419.18 hertz, which makes sense because our sound source is moving away. So you would expect the observed frequency to be less than that which is emitted. Right. In those examples that we talked about, you can see that we have a sound source that is moving and a stationary listener. Let's take a look at this example where the listener is moving and the sound source is stationary. A car is in attendance at an accident scene. A police car is in attendance at an accident scene. The police car is stationary and its siren is emitting a sound of frequency 1000 Hz. A taxi is traveling towards the accident scene at a velocity of 23 meters per second. Calculate the frequency of sound heard by the driver of the taxi when driving towards the scene. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. Right. Frequency emitted. That is 1000 hertz. What other information do we have? We have the velocity of the listener, uh, which is moving towards the scene. Uh, 23 meters per second uh, the sound source is stationary right because uh, the police car is in attendance at an accident scene right you yeah uh, they even say that the police car is stationary 
you would deduce it from the fact that is in attendance at the accident scene but they do tell you either way right what else we have v speed of sound in a 340 meters per second what else do we need we want to calculate fl the frequency observed so we're gonna have fl being equals to v plus or minus vl divided by v plus or minus vs multiplied by fs so what is v speed of sound in a 340 our listener is moving towards so on the numerator we're gonna have plus 23 right we only have four cases so you should know when we have a plus when we have a minus and so on on the denominator 340 our sound source is stationary so it will just be 340 plus or minus zero doesn't matter multiplied by fs the frequency emitted by the sound source that is 1000 hertz so we are expecting at least the frequency that <coughs> we are expecting at least the frequency that is observed by the listener to be more than a thousand hertz to be more than that which is emitted because the listener is moving towards the source we have 1067 1067.65 hertz so there we go uh, our listener is moving towards the scene so the frequency which is observed is greater than that which is emitted so good so far so good and in our third case our listener is moving away from a stationary sound source so a siren at a fire station emits sound of frequency 708 hertz calculate the frequency that the driver of a car will detect if he is traveling away from the fire station at 28 meters per second the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second right let's take a look fl is equals to v plus or minus vl divided by v plus or minus vs multiplied by fs sticking to the basics up to so far this is the frequency this is fs this is the frequency emitted and then the speed of sound in a is 340 so we have 340 plus or minus vl the car is moving away from the fire station at a velocity of 28 meters per second so we're gonna have minus 28 divided by 340 the source is stationary multiplied by the emitted frequency which is 780 hertz in this situation we are expecting the frequency observed to be less than that which is emitted so let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens so 780 uh, from 780 to 715.76 hertz right you can clearly see here that uh, the frequency observed is less than that which is emitted because the listener is moving away from the sound source but these examples that we touched on they are a bit narrow in that we are always trying to calculate fl but that's not always the case sometimes you're given fl you're given fs and you're supposed to find out the velocity of the sound source or the velocity of the listener those are the nature those are the type of questions you expect in the exam and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that right now